Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel and welcome back to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at some gameplay as well as the performance of the Subject 2923 DLC for Remnant of the Ashes. All the footage that you're about to see has been recorded at a 1440p resolution on the game's high settings on our Sapphire Nitro Plus RX5700 XT graphics card. By taking a quick look at the performance overlay in the top left, you should be able to see that our frame rate is averaging somewhere between 80 and 120 FPS, and this is, like I just mentioned, on the game's high settings. While we could indeed increase the graphical settings to Ultra while still holding an average FPS well above the 60 FPS mark, Remnant from the Ashes is an incredibly challenging game, and so I really do prefer the advantages of high frame rates. The reason why we don't drop our settings even lower in the hopes of pushing our frame rate even further is simply because Remnant from the Ashes isn't all that efficient on the CPU, and so while you could lower the graphical settings and boost your frame rate most of the time, you will still hit the same lows due to a CPU bottleneck. It's also worth noting that we have got the minimize input latency option enabled, which can have a negative impact on frame rates, though it does massively increase the responsiveness of the mouse input, which makes the game feel much nicer to play, even if it doesn't look quite as smooth. Since this is one of those situations where we find it nice and easy to hold an average frame rate above 60, but really difficult to hold 120 FPS due to that CPU bottleneck, this is going to be one of those cases where having a free sync enabled monitor by your side is really going to improve your experience. Now, if you are a regular to the channel, you may remember that Remnant from the Ashes actually made it onto our top 10 games of 2019, and since then it has become one of my most played games over the last 12 months, with me racking up around 200 or so hours. Now, I know that that's not a lot compared to the amount of time that a lot of people put into the games that they really enjoy, but for someone like me that has to play hundreds of games per year, that's actually a lot of time invested. Remnant from the Ashes is a sort of Souls-like third-person shooter which is playable in co-op with up to two other players, so teams of three. Me and my friend Zacubus, who you may also recognise from this channel, have played through the entire base game and the two DLCs from start to finish on the hardest difficulties and even though we get frustrated with how difficult it can be at times, I think it's safe to say that we have thoroughly enjoyed each and every minute we've spent with the game. And it's safe to say that the Subject 2923 DLC is no exception. In fact, I would even go as far to say that the Subject 2923 DLC offers some of the very best gameplay seen in the entire game. This, I think, at least for the most part, comes down to the revised boss design philosophy. You see, in the base game and even in the prior DLC, the vast majority of bosses relied on constantly respawning adds as a way to cheaply increase the challenge rather than working on some really unique boss mechanics. In the Subject 2923 DLC, however, a lot of this has been rectified and now most bosses are incredibly complex by design and actually just give you a much more interesting fight than what they did previously. I'd say that up until the latest DLC, there was only really a few out of a few dozen bosses that really met that kind of Dark Souls quality bar, whereas most of the added DLC bosses match that and even exceed it in many ways. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not saying that the base game's bosses are bad by any means, I've had an awful lot of fun learning them and fighting them, and honestly, it's been some of the best boss gameplay that I've ever had, it's just that the DLC bosses are so good that they kind of outshine a lot of the OGs. So it's a shame that the Subject 2923 DLC is not quite as polished as I would have hoped. Fingers crossed, this is just a side effect of the current global situation and hopefully once the developers get back into the swing of things, a few patches will clean up a few of the issues that I have come across. None of these issues are particularly game breaking, but they can be extremely frustrating. They include things such as the odd performance hiccup every now and again, a couple of bosses going AFK, and one boss which would desync from his mount, making him incredibly difficult to fight. Thankfully, the game developers up until this point have shown that they are really willing to support the game, and I have no doubt that a lot of these issues will be fixed in the near future. Before I jump off, I also want to quickly point out that there has been some really nice visual upgrades to Remnant from the Ashes in this DLC, particularly with the starting area of the new campaign. I don't know why, but this biome just gives me some really strong vibes of Hunt Showdown. Don't get me wrong, I know that it's completely the wrong biome, it just feels like that. It's got that kind of misty atmosphere, that kind of dense, close feeling about it, and I think it looks great. The other aspect of presentation I would like to give a quick shout out to has got to be the animation. 
Remnant from the Ashes always animated fairly well, but it was by no means kind of barrier breaking or pushing the boat out. It just, it works really well for what it was. However, in the Subject 2923 DLC, I think the new monsters and bosses in particular are animated really well. They really flow with their movements. They feel like they're moving really smoothly, but they also feel like they've got some weight to them. It just, it works really well and it looks awesome. And there's also a couple of funny little animations in there that I have noticed as well. But with all that said, that is once again going to be me done for today. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you are new around here, please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. If you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, you can leave it down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, you can like this video. And if you disliked it, there's a button for that too. And all we ask is that you give us feedback so we can try and improve in future. So once again, from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching this video. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye bye.